a lot of people, you know, are, are familiar with the 50 Cent story about him being shot nine times. Uh, so can you tell me about how you, you and 50 Cent met each other? I met 50 through the same person I told you just gave him my name, J.U. I met him through Ja. Me and Ja used to go to Redirection together. And um, after, um, after a while, you know, me and Ja both was locked up. I bumped back into Ja in jail. When I came off from jail, me and Ja got back together. We saw each other again, exchanged numbers, and we started messing with each other, like hanging out with each other. I go hang on his block, you know what I'm saying? He'd come to my hood. And then he told me he was locked up. He met some kid that was rapping. And he wanted me to start fucking with him, like go to the studio, like when they have, when 50 had a studio session, he'd be like, yo, come to the studio. I go to the studio and I met him like that. Going to the studio with Ja. Okay, so Ja and, and 50 were like, they were they met in jail and they were really good they became really good friends yeah they really good friends okay so at one point i believe you mentioned that the job passed away yeah job passed away job had um passed away he got killed god rest in peace job you know what i'm saying he got he got killed in the hood and i was on my way down there actually the day he got killed to see him this is the dude who gave you your name. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty significant. You guys must have been pretty close. You know, how how did that affect you when you found out? Uh, that shit f me up when I got down there. Like, I, I couldn't. That shit was, like, crazy. Ja, ja was a good dude. That shit just f my head up. Ja is the dude who introduces you to 50. You know what I'm saying? And... You know, what was 50 like back then when you first met him? Was he like, you know what I'm saying, still wild, dude? Or was he like trying to calm down and, you know what I'm saying, kind of go straight at the time? I don't, I don't know what wild. I don't remember no wild. I don't know. I don't know what wild. I don't know what you mean by wild. I don't know no wild. Okay. Well, you know, one of his most uh, famous issues was with Ja Rule. And him, you know what I'm saying? That's, you know, well documented. You know, I think everybody's kind of talked about it. You know, do you know, actually know what the origins of their, you know what I'm saying, or how their beef actually started or anything? No. Uh, I, I believe they beef started over something that really didn't have nothing to do with 50. Like, that's what. Okay, there's, there's two sides of the story. You know, uh. 50 says it happened because he was friends with the guy who snatched Ja Rule's chain. Exactly. And Ja Rule says that 50 Cent just took that opportunity as a way to kind of like, you know what I'm saying, get his career started. Nah, I, it's the first one you said, the chain part. Okay. Were you around when Ja Rule and 50 Cent were cool? I don't, I don't. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't recall all that. You, I don't, I don't recall all that. Okay. And uh, 50 Cent just as Ja Rule on your life's on the line. You know, what was all that like during that time when, you know what I'm saying, they're kind of like dissing each other? I believe there's some interviews where Ja Rule's even kind of taking some shots at 50. 50's kind of taking some shots at Ja Rule. Uh, you asked me, did this happen or... No, I'm just asking you what, what it was like during that time. What was it like during that time? Like, it was regular to, like, I don't want, like, it wasn't nothing different than me. It was regular. Everything was regular. I'm Were you there when 50 and Jaw fought? I wasn't there. But if you talking about when he punched him and gave him a black eye, that was in Atlanta. I wasn't there. One of 50 Cent's, you know, like, big, known, well, diss songs is... The song How to Rob, you know, where he kind of like disses the whole industry, you know what I'm saying, from Jay-Z to Big Pun to, I don't know, you name it. He was he was dissing him. You know, were you around during that time when he made that song? Yeah, I was a, I was around. I was I was around. Actually, actually, he made the song I was down south, and then I came back to New York. 
Yeah, I was around. Who all was mad? You know what I'm saying? Did you guys hear anything about rappers being mad and everything during that time? Everybody says, not everybody. I ain't gonna say everybody. But a few people was mad. A few, uh, it was a few people. But I don't think they was mad where they was like, if they was mad, they never said nothing. Like, they just say something on the radio, like on a song or something, but they didn't say it. Like, I ain't, we ain't never see that. You know, they didn't want to say nothing to him and like, when they seen him. What was 50 Cent's response when Jay-Z dissed him back on uh, his album where he says, uh, I'm about a dollar, what the f is 50 Cent? No, if I'm not mistaken, like, I think it was a summer jam. Yeah, it was summer jam. I think it was summer jam. Jay Z and Fifty was like they was backstage. Jay Z must have gave Fifty dap or something that would have, uh, and then he went outside, went out and performed that song. <laughs> That's a trip. Damn. So it was like, like everybody, mo most people kind of got that it wasn't like a serious song. Man, but you know what? Jay Z saying his name really let him take off. Really, then him getting shot really added up to it too. Yeah, that was, that's pretty big. You know, Jay Z going on Summer Jam. You know, saying your name. I mean, at that time, you know, Jay Z is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, rappers in the world. You know, you know, at least top two or three or something. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that must have been huge for him. He was probably pretty hyped about it, I, I would assume. Uh, no. I think he was type mad. I'm not mad, but he was type shocked. Like, I don't know, surprised. Because he's, he, I don't know. I wasn't really there that day. Oh, okay. At, at one point, you know, you, you know 50 Cent, you guys are hanging around. But at one point, you actually become his driver, and you guys actually become close friends. Can you tell me about how that happened a little bit? Well, I became his driver because I, we went on a tour. I, I, got, I got lucky to be on the Cash Made Rough Rider tour with them. Uh, when I came back from down south, my homeboy was like, yo, we going on a tour. He asked me if I want to go. So I said, yeah. So when I went on a tour, you know, he had a driver and all that. We going to we going to the shows and all that. I forgot where where we was at, but the driver he fired the driver. He got mad at the driver, fired the driver. So when he fired the driver, he asked me and my homies, "Yo, which one y'all got a license?" I was the only one with a license, so he made me the driver, and that's how I got extra. Close, cool with him. Okay. Well, what was the tour like? I mean, that's a, that was a pretty big tour at the time. You know, it was, I think you guys were gone probably a couple months. Nah. That shit was no couple months. That shit was quick. <laughs> that was a couple weeks, a couple days, like two or, th two or three weeks, I think. Oh, okay. So you guys weren't actually nah, on the whole tour. Nah, because you remember, he was just, he was on, um, he was just promoting that How to Rob. He was promoting the power of the dollar. That's when he was on Sony. So I, I, he wasn't really buzzing like that. So he wasn't, he wasn't headlining or nothing. So. Okay, I see. Now, so you guys come back off tour. You know what? Do you guys? Does he just go instantly to the studio? So at this point, when you come back, you're his driver. Are you guys going to the studio a lot, working? Now, when when we come back. Nah, see now when we come back, nah, he finds out I live in Queens, so you know, that made it a, like made us a little like he used to go to the city and stuff. Like it'd be times he go to the city. Sometimes I would go with him. I wasn't going every time, but sometimes I would go, but not every time though. But we started getting closer though after the tour. Okay. So at one point, you know, 50 Cent is making his album uh, Power of the Dollar. And I believe you were around during that time? Yeah, I was around during that time. What, what was that like? You know what I'm saying? Being out of the studio, you know, 50 Cent has his deal. You know, he's, he's probably got a, he's got a pretty good buzz at this time. Yeah, 
but he had a buzz, but they nobody knew how he looked. Oh, okay. No, nobody knew how he looked. That's crazy. Good, okay, because he didn't. Uh... He wasn't. It wasn't. I, I, it wasn't no social media and uh, none of that. Like he wasn't going on YouTube like that, like that. You know what I'm saying so. When he was on the stage doing How to Rob, they didn't even know who. You know what I'm saying they knew the song, but they didn't know how he looked. Right, because that song came out on um, a soundtrack, I believe, and it didn't. It, he didn't like release a full album at first. Because he got home. he got dropped off of Sony because he got when he got shot. Right, right. Okay, so this brings us to, you know what I'm saying, the famous shooting that 50 Cent is well known for. He, You know, you were there. I, you know, 50 Cent was uh, shot nine times. Can you kind of take us through that day and what was going on? Uh, that day, we supposed to go get tattoos. And um, he had a video shoot. He had two videos he was about to do. So I guess he wanted tattoos for the videos. Okay, what what videos was he getting ready to do? He was supposed to do a video with Beyonce and a video with Nori. Okay. And that's off the power of the, off the, I forgot the name of the song, but it's off the power of the dollar album. I believe it's called uh, Thug Love, right? Uh, Thug Love featuring Destiny's Child. Yeah. You know how soon he was getting ready to record that? How soon he was going to record that song? Or the video, I mean? Um, he was supposed to go to Cancun. And when he came back from Cancun, he was going to shoot the video. So we got shot in May. I, I guess in, like, June he probably was going to do the video. So 50 Cent wants to get some tattoos because he's getting ready to shoot some music videos. And... And he calls you for a ride, or I believe there was a taxi or something. He was also calling at the time. Nah, it was it was a cab. He called the cab already to, to go. I called him that. This is what happened. I called him that morning. I'm like, Yo, what's up? What are we doing? He's like, Yo, I gotta go get this tattoos done. Oh, I call the cab. I'm like, I am about to pull up. So when I came there, on my way there. The girl I was with, she's like, yo, you can borrow my car. Just drive me to the beauty salon and just come back and get me after y'all finish. So when I got there, I told him, yo, don't worry about the cab. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to drive. She's going to let me hold the car. I'm like, yo, just go get the shine so we can shine today. So he's like, all right. I got back in the car. He walks to the crib. When he came out the crib, he came out with the shine. Threw the shines in my lap. I put the chain on my neck. Boom. I'm like, yo, where, the, where, the, um, where we going? He said, we're going back by Jamaica where I was at the other day because I forgot I was down there. I forgot I was at the tattoo parlor when they first started this shit with him. So we go back. We, I'm, I'm about to... Um, I'm facing towards the car and do it. So... The tattoo parlor's not that way. I got to bust a U-turn. The block is so small, I can't make a full U-turn. So I have to back up. So in the, in the process of backing up, a car is coming. I'm trying to be considerate. I let the car and let the car go by. But in the same time, we're, we're having a conversation. We're talking about Cancun, how my friend going to get to Cancun. When I'm backing up when I, and I let the car go by, I still got the car in reverse. So I stopped, but I told you, we're talking. So I forget that the car is, is in reverse when I'm like, yo, oh shit. When I, let me start over. When I, when I reverse, right? When I reverse, I said, like I said, I seen the car coming. I'm trying to be considerate. But I thought 50 saw it, so he ain't say nothing. But when I said, when I turned around, I'm like, yo, who this? I seen somebody jumping out the car. He seen the car, but he didn't see the person jump out the car. That's what I mean. I asked him, yo, who this? He like, I'm waiting for a response. 
I mean, when I, and the response I get was, oh shit. So I'm like, oh shit. When I turn, nigga starts shooting. So I forgot the car was in reverse. I'm thinking the car is in drive. So when I step on the gas, I hit their car, thinking that I was gonna go forward, I went backwards. So when I went backwards, I hit my head. That shit froze me. But 50 said he didn't get shot to this point here when the shit froze me. That's when the gunman came around the car and he shot us. But in that process, the girl was screaming. She like, drive, drive. So that's what woke me up. And I drove down the block and I drove him to the hospital. Okay, and so did you reverse the car at all after you kind of started to take off? I just told you I had the car in reverse. I said that. Okay, let me explain that. Sorry, bro. Let me explain a little bit better. So you guys start to take off. At any point, did you guys, like... Oh, oh, yeah. I, I, I see what you said, yeah. I did reverse back. When 50 told me he had a gun, I did reverse back. I, I, I didn't think you wanted me to say... I, I see what you did. You went and you seen what I said before. All right, yeah. I, I had a gun. Yeah, we had guns in the car. I backed up. I said, yo, the f I was going to go back to shoot. But he was already hurt. And Shorty was like, yo, take him to the hospital. Take him to the hospital. So I took him to the hospital. I couldn't take hearing what she was saying. She was all hysterical. I had to get her out the car. So when I got her out of the car, it was just me and 50. I wasn't from Queens, so I had, I told him to stay up. Yo, you gotta direct me to the, to the hospital. So he directed me to the hospital. Were you shot at this time? I didn't know I was shot until I got to the hospital. Where were you shot at? I got shot in my left hand. It went in and out. Damn, and you didn't even know you were shot for all that time driving and everything? Nah, I didn't know I was shot. The way, like, it got, it, it went through my flesh. Like, it wasn't really, like, it's like, through, like, right here. Damn. Well, what was 50 Cent? Did he say anything when, when the shooting was going on or right <laughs> after the shooting or anything? He said that shit he said in many men. Pull off, pull off. Damn. Okay. <laughs> I should have said that. The f he said it. You know, the shots start going off. You know, the the lady you're with is screaming. You know, it's absolute chaos, you know. And at one point, you know what I'm saying, you had to look back and seen how bad he was shot. You know what I'm saying? I'm sure it was pretty bad. He was shot in the face, you know. What was your first reaction when you when you first seen him and you seen how bad it was? That that, that shit was shocking. Like like how you saying like I I, I haven't experienced nothing like that before, so that shit was shocking to me. Yeah, shit, man. What so what was the conversation like when you guys were on the way to the hospital? Nah. Uh, I was doing most of the talking because I, I was asking for directions. You guys pull up to the hospital, and what and what happens then? I pull up to the hospital. I'm like, yo, um, you know, my friend been shot. So they come. I got out the car. And I went to the. You know what I'm saying? I ran to get some help in the hospital, and they came back and they got him out the car. So he couldn't even walk at this point? Was he shot in the legs? Yeah, he couldn't even walk. They had to help him out the car. And that's how I knew it was that serious. Like, I realized I got shot when I was going to get help for him in the hospital. That's when I realized I got shot. Okay, so, okay, so you guys pull up. 50 can't really get out of the car. You realize it's bad. And at a point, you feel like you, you you learned that you're shot. Yeah. Now, they take 50 into the hospital, 
And and what happens from there? You know what I'm saying? Does he go into surgery? Yeah, he goes straight. He goes to surgery. I went. To, I went to. I guess you went there. Yeah, I got my hands stitched up. He went to surgery. I got my hands stitched up. How long were you in the hospital? Not that long. Okay. Well, you get out of the hospital, and do you kind of go check on Fifty at this point? Nah. When I got out the hospital. That shit was crazy. Like, when I got the house, like, I ain't even gonna lie, like, I was, type traumatized, like, what the fuck? I couldn't even believe, like, it was wild people outside, like, that shit was crazy that day. Okay, so you get out of the hospital, and you said there was a big crowd around the hospital, you know, and, and you were kind of, I think, I believe you said you were traumatized a little bit, you know, so what, what all was that like for you? Shit was, it was different, I never experienced no shit like that. Okay, and and I believe he was in the hospital for 13 days? I don't know how long he was in the hospital. Okay, yeah, probably was. Probably, he probably was in there for like two weeks. I only seen him one time in the hospital. Okay, and what was that like? Was he like awake and everything and doing good? Yeah, he was awake, but he couldn't talk. Right, okay, so he had his, his jaw wired shut from the shot, I take it. Yeah. Okay, so he gets out. He eventually gets out of the hospital, and at what point do you guys see each other again? Um, I seen him when he, I seen him when he moved to PA. I was seeing him. So he moved away for a while after he got shot. Yeah. Okay. What what was? Do you know what his recovery was like or anything like that? I know he used to go go get the rehabilitation and all that. I wasn't going with him with all that. But when I was coming, like, I seen the process of him walking with the limp to, you know, him getting better. Who all was around him at the time when he was recovering? And, you know, who was really by 50 side? Um, his baby mother I seen. That's who I seen around him. His baby mother, his son. I, I guess his, fam his family, you know. Did you guys ever talk about the shooting afterwards? Um, not really. Okay. Now, one of the things that his baby mom actually accused him of was only being shot five times. <laughs> and then they said that he changed the number from five to nine because he didn't want to be like Tupac. Is there any truth to that? I kind of believe that. I kind of believe that. I don't. I kind of believe that. I, I, I wasn't in the surgery room with him, so. Okay, so you you kind of don't really know for sure, but. Yeah. You could believe that. Okay. Do we get rich or die trying? CD comes out, and in there, there's a DVD, an hour long DVD, and in the DVD, he talks about the shooting. And when he talks about the shooting, he accuses the guy who was with him, which is you, of freezing up on him. You know, uh, did he blame you for getting shot or getting shot that many times? I don't know. You got. I don't know. You got to ask him that question. I don't know. Okay. You guys never talked about it though. He never like accused you in person or anything like that. Nah, he never said that to my face. I don't, I don't know. Okay, were you shocked when you seen the when you seen the DVD and he said that? I ain't even see that. I never even seen that. Okay, well it's it's on the internet if you want to check it out. Where he kind of like he he kind of tells the whole story and everything. And what he says? And what he said? He said that the guy who he was with freezed up. Uh. I don't, I don't know about all that, but <laughs> I don't know about all that. Okay. What has been talked about, and I mean, I think it's, you know, dudes have even testified. There's, there's at least one, one guy that's testified to everything I'm about to say, you know, when he kind of turned to be an informant, was that Homo was the guy who shot 50, which 50 also 
accuses Homo of shooting him in his song Many Men where he says, you know, Homo shot me. Three weeks later, he got shot down. You know, um, now what people might not know about Homo is that he was actually uh, Mike Tyson's bodyguard. And he actually used to live at uh, 50 Cent's, well, not 50, it wasn't 50 Cent's match at the time, but it was Mike Tyson's mansion in Connecticut, which 50 Cent actually ended up buying. And a few weeks after Homo was killed, Mike Tyson actually shot, shouted him out after he won a boxing match. You know, is there anything you could talk about any of that? No. I don't know nothing about none of that. Okay. Now, when 50 gets, after he gets shot and he's better and he's going to be okay, what happens with his record deal situation? I think Sony dropped him. Sony dropped him. And I guess he was shopping after Sony dropped him. Were you around him at that time? Um, wait, after, he got, after we got shot, I got locked up in November. So I was like, in November, I got locked up. In February, I got locked up November 2001. Yeah, February 2002, he signed to Eminem. Okay. Well, were you still his driver afterwards, or was like was the the shooting incident that kind of ended your guys' uh, arrangement? Nah, I still was around him until I got locked up. Or what was his reaction when Columbia dropped him? Um, he was tight. He was tight. I'm trying to see. Hold on, I'm trying to think. Yeah, he was tight. I'm trying to think around the date. What, um, what was he doing? That um, NYPD, LAPD was on a mixtape, right? That wasn't. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So he was putting out songs on mixtapes and all that shit. But yeah, that's when he about to start the mixtape shit. Okay, so so when he found that out, he was just like, I'm just gonna go hard with these mixtapes and kind of flood the streets and everything. I assume so. I don't know. I was locked up. Like, like, I, like the NYPD, LAPD. I was when I when I just brought that up. I was gonna say I was in the studio with him when he made that. So that was for a mixtape. I got locked up a little bit later after that. So he was still like doing mixtape stuff. He wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I think when I got locked. I, Hold up, before I got locked up, he probably was, yeah, I got locked up in November, so I think after I got locked up, all the mixtapes started going, he started going crazy with the mixtape, like Christmas and all that, he started going crazy with the mixtape. Now, there was, you know, heavy rumors he was blackballed at the time. You know, what was that like, you know, for him? You said he was blackballed? Blackballed by who? I believe it was Supreme, or there's the music bit industry in general. Oh, and the music of either either from before he got shot from the song Ghetto Quran, or you know what I'm saying after he got shot too when he got dropped. So it was like kind of like nobody really wanted to mess with him from what uh, I've heard. Oh, oh, yeah, that was on Power the Dollar though, right? Oh, right, right, right. I don't really know, like. See, like, those times, like, you know, he was living in Queens, so I was in Brooklyn. So whatever he was going through, like, in Queens, like, with Queens people, I wouldn't know about. Like, when we was going out of Queens, I would know about. Like, what's going on in Queens, I wouldn't know about. Okay. Whenever we was going to his hood, it was all love. Like, it wasn't like, you know, it was just like some, it was regular, like, I we over here at Sun Crib, we, we holding him down, that's it. It wasn't like, we could be about to, whenever we went to his crib, we was about to go somewhere anyway. It wasn't no just come hang out. It's, it's like coming to Queens and we going somewhere to the city or somewhere. Okay, and you know, you had mentioned at one point you ended up going to jail. Yeah, I went to jail. I went back to jail. And it sounds like you went to jail 
right when things started to take off for him. Exactly. 90 days later, he signed the Eminem. I was on the phone with him, too, when he signed. He's, and that was the last time I spoke to him. Really? Yeah. And how come you guys quit talking? I don't know. You got to ask him that. So, no, okay, no reason. So you go to jail. How long were you in jail this time? I did. I did four years this time. Damn. Okay, so shit. You do four years, and, and this is like when he, yep. you know, really, really blew up. You know, he's the biggest thing. He's the biggest thing in America at the time. Yeah. That must have been crazy for you. How'd you feel when you learned all that in jail? I was happy for him. I was happy. Okay, and, and you get out of jail. Do you try to contact him or anything? Nah. Oh, I, don't, I don't feel like I should have tried to contact him because I feel like he should have contacted me. Like, I took you to the hospital. I saved your life. Yeah. Like, I'm supposed to reach out to you? Like, if you saved my life, right? You supposed to reach out to me or am I supposed to reach out to you? How that works? I think if somebody saved my life and they were in jail, uh, I'd be reaching out to them. Let's backtrack. Do you call that saving somebody's life? What I did? Uh, did you save his life? I mean, you drove him to the hospital. I seen You know? Uh, we heard a couple of stories. What's the rapper name? Ratchet, rapper what? He, he let his friend die in the back car, dropped his friend off in the back car, backseat his car, like... I drove him to the hospital. I don't feel like I supposed to holler at him when I got out of jail. That's what real people, that's what real people would think. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what other people would think. So you're in jail and and he's not reaching out to you. Are are you kind of mad about the situation? Like, Nah, I'm not. Yo, man, this dude's supposed to be there. Nah, cause you know, you gotta remember, I was who I was before I met him. I'm saying like it was I was just disappointed. I wasn't mad, like Okay. And now does everybody in jail know you were the dude who was with him when he got shot? Nah, not until not until the feds came and got me. So when you're in jail, the feds come for you too? Yeah. Damn. Okay. But you only ended up doing four years total. Yeah, I got yeah, I got questioned. Only in the feds, I got questioned. And then everybody finds out. Well, what did everybody think when they found out like you were the dude who was there? Oh, in the jail, nobody. I told you, I was who I was before any of that. It wasn't like I was running around bragging and boasting about none of that stuff. Like I don't gotta do all that. So, okay, so you do your four years and you get out of jail. What do you do with yourself then? I distance myself from a lot of stuff. I learned, I learned like I really don't need to really, you know what I'm saying? I don't got to be around a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying? People to be successful. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I hear you. So you get out of jail, you distance yourself. Do you ever run into, like, any of his people or anything like that? Or, you know what I'm saying, people with 50 and, you know what I'm saying, he never tries to reach out to you or nothing from this point on? Nah. <laughs> nah, dude. Nah, not at all. That's crazy. Damn. You just seen it. I'm quite sure. I'm doing this interview because you seen I did another interview. I, he, he ain't say nothing since then. Like, I'm not worried about him saying nothing, man. I'm not worried about none of that. I don't right, no, no, I, I, I didn't mean like, uh, you know, saying nothing negative. I just meant like, 
He, they ain't no yeah. reaching out. Nah. Like, or any of his people, or send a, you know, any words to you, or, you know what I'm saying, anything. No. No, no words, nothing. Okay, how, how do you feel about 50 Cent today? I don't have, I don't have no feelings towards him. Like, I don't have no feelings. Like, it is what it is. Like, one thing I do know, I know he's seen that first interview, and I know he's gonna see this interview. Like, I know that though. Yeah, I believe he'll see it. I believe he'll see it also. You know, um, oh, uh, about a year ago, yeah, a dude named Cal Dawson comes out, and he does a Vlad TV interview, and he says that he was with Fifty Cent when he got shot. What do you think when you seen that? Well, first to tell you the truth, I I didn't even see it. Like, like my homies and them started like calling me, like homies that I ain't speak to in a minute. Like, just start ringing my phone. Like, yo, you saw this? You saw this? But when I looked at it, I just like laugh. I'm like, you know, you got a lot of mentally challenged people out here, man. You know, so you gotta you gotta know how to um. You gotta know how to um, detect that shit. Duke is bugged out, man. Duke is bugged out. Yeah, that was crazy. When I seen it, I was like, yo, this this is probably gonna be a dope interview. Yeah. You know, and um, all of a sudden, I, you know, 50 Cent posts about it. You know, he wants it taken down, but he doesn't really, like, say why he wants it taken down. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, you know, all of a sudden it's down, and I'm thinking, damn, man, like, he really had that shit taken down, you know? Like, what the f***? And then, you know, later on it comes out that the whole shit was, like, a fraud. It, yeah. You know, completely lying. You know what's so crazy? He started saying he was Black Rob manager, right? You know I was up north of Black Rob. God bless the dead Black Rob, right? I was up north of Black Rob. Me and Black Rob was in the same dorm. Like, when he did that shit... Like, I wanted to reach out to Black Raw, but Black Raw was sick around that time. You know what I'm saying? But Duke is crazy, man. Duke is bugged out. Yeah, man. You know, uh, you know, even though you and 50 don't talk no more, man, I mean, you know, his, his story is one of the most, like, infamous, you know, talked about moments in hip-hop that kind of really... Uh, you know, changed everything in hip hop at the time. You know, how do how do you feel about being a part of something like that? You know. So, I'll be honest with you, I never really, I never really even thought about that shit until like I say like a couple weeks ago, like a week or two ago. Somebody spoke to somebody and they was like, "Yo, you probably changed the um, you probably changed the hip hop world with uh, you probably helped change the hip hop world with that." Saving, like, you know what I'm saying? Taking him to the hospital. Like, I never thought about that. But that shit is crazy. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you wouldn't have got him to the hospital in time, I mean, shit, I don't even know what hip-hop would be like without 50 Cent, man. I mean, he's... I mean... I don't even, I can't even put into words how much he's done, you know what I'm saying, in terms of hip-hop and just entertainment. I mean, you know, now he has power, which is crazy. You know? Yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there that are, uh, you know, happy that you're able to get him to the hospital on time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Hey, that's what's up. I mean, you know. It is what it is. It is what it is. You're right. Shout out, shout out to those fans. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, uh, shit, man. Well, uh, is there anything you you would like to add to to this? You know, you have anything coming up or anything you want to uh, talk about? I got that five five one shit coming out on Info Minds. I'm talking about me and my crew. You know. The 551 crew. If you listen to Power Dollar, I know you heard of 551. Okay, so 
So the people who don't know, what is 551? 551? 551 was it wasn't supposed to be a gang, but it was a gang, you know. And that was a crew when they had the Bloods and the Crips really going crazy. It was like neutral, neutral people. You know what I'm saying? It's neutral kings. It's really neutral niggas, but it's now it's neutral kings. You know what I'm saying? Getting cheese. So. Yeah, we okay. did it. We did it. We did. We we talk about Ja in there. We talk about we talk about my man Twiz. Twiz is one of the one of like the the founders of Five Five One. Talks about my man, um, my man Five Five One Ring. My man Five Five One Twiz. They do the interview with me. Five Five One Ring. You gotta watch the interview to find out who these people is. I'm not gonna tell you who it is. Just watching Full Minds, and you'll know who everybody is. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So so you got this thing with Info Minds coming up. Is there anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, nah, I said, uh, I ain't really got nothing to talk about. I just really felt bad that I didn't do your interview in a long time. I had you waiting for a long time, so... No, I'm really a man of my word. I wouldn't never take your number if I wasn't gonna do it. So I just, you know what I'm saying? Bless man, you. I, I appreciate you, man. You know, um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? You decided to do it with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it took you know a little over a year to get it done, but man, I'm I'm thankful for you. You know what I'm saying? I really appreciate you taking the time. You know what I'm saying? Sitting down, man. I mean, you know, this is a you know, your story is, is a really dope story, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, a big part of hip hop history, man, and I just I just appreciate it. Yeah, man, I appreciate you even giving me the time to even tell my story. Yeah, for sure, man. Definitely, man. That's that's it's nothing, man. That's what's up, man. Uh, I hope I hope I hope everything work out, man. Don't worry, Duke ain't gonna tell you to take it down either, man. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a wrap. <laughs> What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.